Right, here we have the EJV OSCE. EJVs indicated when you need IV access but can't gain it peripherally. Before we start, we want to make sure we've got our seven pieces of equipment, which we have all here, and we want to make sure they're all prepped, but ideally they'd still be in packaging. Right. Pull our take them out and get it sorted. We want to make sure that we have drug checked our saline and our saline block. And then we have a lure ready to access. All right, and our needle for this is going to be a 20 gauge, but for an actual EJV, you would use a 14 gauge. We want to make sure that we've gained consent with our patient. If they're conscious and if they're unconscious, we can use informed consent. We then want to position them appropriately so that um, access is easier and that their um, jugular vein is distended. We're going to turn them 45 degrees to their side so that the vein is up. Make sure they're lying down, which helps distend it. You can then um, raise their legs um, push on their um, liver for their hepatojugular reflex or the most effective method is to get them to bear down if they're conscious and you can use a syringe like in the Valsalva maneuver and supraclavicular um, super tamponade. We want to um, clean our site before entering using circular motions All right. and then from here we can tamponade just above the clavicle and apply tension. We'll then grab our needle, uh, make sure it's bevel up. We're going to be placing this on the top half of the jugular vein as to avoid pneumothorax. And we're going to be inserting it at a 15 to 20 degree angle with our finger back so we can aspirate it. So we push in our angle, we pull back with our finger to aspirate. We're getting air because of this mannequin. We then flatten the needle out and advance about three millimeters. And then we can shuffle our finger up and possibly use our thumb to try and advance our catheter in there, which is advancing nice and freely, which indicates I'm probably in, All right? We want to make sure that we don't move our right hand as to avoid shearing the catheter off. And the reason we use this method with the um, older IV needles and the block is to avoid ear embolus. We then want to take our two fingers and tamponade the vein nice and hard. This is also to avoid ear embolus. And pull out our needle. This will go immediately in the sharps container. We we'll then grab our lure and screw it on. Right. We can then place our first piece of tape to secure. From here we take our saline flush, which has already been drug checked, and screw it on. We want to flush at least five milliliters, and we're going to check to make sure that there's no blebs, which would indicate that we're pushing fluid into the interstitial, no hematomas forming, and it's flushing nice and easily. That's good. We'll then clean up the site of any blood that came out with our gauze, which will also help our tegaderm stick. Grab our tegaderm and we'll place it around with the window showing our access site. Nice and secure. Then we take our second piece of tape and place it over the needle to, oh, not the needle, the catheter and lure to secure them. Right, we can then take our um, sticker here, write date and time on it and the gauge of our needle if it's not obvious and we can place this so it's not obstructing our entry site and that's all there is to it, EJV.